Hey there everybody and welcome back to more Dead Space 2. If you remember last time we had just reached the incredibly psychedelic blacklit medical bay. And already you can tell, well, we're gonna be in for a whole lot of necromorph ambushes. But thankfully, under some requests from a thread, I decided that in between updates I should probably go ahead and update the Ripper as it's a pretty amazing weapon. And we really haven't been seeing that much of it. So what we're seeing right now is a very, very upgraded version of the uh, the Ripper. Now you may be thinking this whole black light aesthetic is more or less just to get something of a a taut atmosphere or just a general scary atmosphere, but really as we'll progress to the level we'll start to understand more and more that there actually is, well, a good story based reason for why everything is doused in black light. Now this particular little ambush slash arena here can actually be fairly difficult in regards to these exploders, mostly due to that center structure there, basically uh, well, it makes the room actually a bit smaller than you might realize. And pretty much the size of the exploders explosion radius is actually pretty large when uh, you just take into consideration how much you know real estate is taken up in this room by that center structure. After gaining access to that door, we get another small ambush. We'll start to see a lot more of these advanced pukers and slashers, especially as we uh, progress through the rest of the Ishimura. They really do not want to make this area too easy for you. I really, really do not like the exploder sacks in this uh, particular room. I mean, you've already seen that three-fourths of my health was taken off by just one sack. Also, I think it's fairly interesting how much of the original Dead Space 1 aesthetic they did keep. Especially considering this is a CEC uh, well, ship. So we'll see lots of CEC monikers on everything, especially the uh, storage crates.
and yet another rather subtle poke at uh, Isaac's psyche. Most of that was actually from the original Dead Space when Nicole's suicide note was found. But obviously the screaming bloodied face of Nicole was not actually part of that original recording and was more or less just part of the overall hallucination. Now, a lot of these scribblings and writings and what I assume to be blood smears on the wall, I'm actually a bit curious as to whether or not those are from the, well, the remains of the cleaning crew or actually something that the cleaning crew happened upon as they were well, attempting to wipe all, you know, trace of what happened on the Ishimura. And here we have a returning puzzle from Dead Space 1. Pretty easy. Just have to slide the platform over and walk across. And also to save some ammo, you can always just stasis a lurker and smash it with the boot. It's actually a pretty uh, con concise and simple way to take one down. That looks safe, but we'll be dealing with that as soon as we move this platform back over. Can you hear it? Yep. It may be hard to see right now, but as it gets closer you'll notice that this is a Black Leaper, which is a modified and even more dangerous version of the Leaper we've already run into. Thankfully, the Ripper actually, you know, does pretty uh, quick work of one. We also get a visual indication that, well, these sparkly electrical bits there are kind of dangerous, but maybe we can use that to our advantage. Before we continue moving on, there is a door we can open up over to the side here. Might as well go ahead and investigate that. <laughs> nice little power node. They actually give out power nodes uh, quite plentifully throughout the Ishimura. And there's actually a lot of... What is that? Cleaner. How futuristic. But yeah, there's actually quite a few benches you can uh, make upgrades on. There's plenty of power notes, so I've actually made sure to power up as many things as possible. But to get past this electrical barrier right here, just want to make sure he wasn't holding on to anything for me. But yeah, we, all we have to do is pull out the battery, and we can safely get across. Bad thing is, after we do make our way across, well, it starts an ambush, but we can easily pop the battery back in, even though the, the field doesn't stop leapers, which is kind of bad. But it does make quick work of even enhanced slashers, so save ourselves some ammo and have a good laugh at them suicidally charging at us. We can safely collect our spoils and make our way across. 
Not before checking out the hole, though, because there's a hidden little goodie in there, a ruby semiconductor. And hopefully you've been holding on to a power node, because there's actually a locked power node door. And there's actually not a set amount of goodies in here. It's pretty much randomized. A bit hard to see there. It says, help us. But yeah, in my journeys into this power node room, more than anything, I seem to get a metric shit ton of healing items, which is actually fairly nice. Yeah, almost to the point where I've uh, almost filled up my entire inventory with healing items. And like I mentioned before, it's only been about five minutes since we've seen a bench last, but, you know, I figured, well, we got power nuts. Might as well see if we can upgrade a few more stuff. Yeah, stasis is still pretty good. Figured I'd also show off where the Ripper is right now. Very nice. But, might as well go ahead and upgrade the detonator. Because we have been using that quite a bit. That is a fairly good point. Isaac never really had the closure of actually finding Nicole's body. All he was actually given was that video suicide note and endless uh, dead girlfriend hallucinations. But rather surprisingly enough, there's actually no ambush in here, just a rather convenient store for us to sell off. Well, that ruby semiconductor. Wow, we are actually doing really good on uh, medicinal items. Might as well actually sell one of those uh, full healings. Actually, just get rid of a lot of these stasis modules. We don't actually use those. Stasis packs. And with that extra money, we can buy even more power nodes. So useful. You know, we're actually doing pretty good. Zero gravity. Uh, it looks like this particular tram has not actually been... Uh, looks like it was in the process of being cleaned. As we head down this tramway, we got the broken wreckage of a tram spiraling along. So rather hard to see, but in the distance there is a lurker. 
One of many, I should add. I am amazing at sniping. But it's actually for the best not to rush through this section, even though technically you could. Because there are a few goodies uh, hanging around, such as power node and some randomized bits of ammunition. Also, I really just like the set piece of the broken down and mangled up tram. Here come the lurkers. Yeah, it's not just one or two, it's like five or six. And... Well, thankfully the detonator actually makes pretty quick work of them. Even though you do kind of have to account for the slow trajectory that the detonator has and the zero gravity. But yeah, you can actually see quite a few of these signs here and there. Well, I guess from the supervisor telling, uh, telling the lowly peons as well. They they maybe missed a spot. But already we have reached the bridge. We've reached another intersection of pure, unmitigated danger. And one of the architectural changes, you can already tell, from Dead Space 1 to Dead Space 2 in regards to the bridge are these rather unsightly boxes. And obviously that means stalker ambushes. But it won't just be stalkers that we'll have to deal with here. No, this time it'll be a combination of stalkers and these god awful enhanced pukers. Yeah, these enhanced pukers just take so much damage. I mean, even with a pretty well upgraded Ripper, they still take a while to take down. And it's a it's a pretty bad situation if you are slowed down, have one of them puking on you, and then you get charged by a stalker. That can pretty much spell instant death for you. Warning. 
in this little back room here, we actually have, well, pretty much one of the few audio logs. Allison Landers, this is Brandon Larach. Thank you for identifying Ishimura archive footage and rig logs that could potentially contradict the official storyline of its demise at Aegis 7. It is critical that no word of the artifact's recovery ever be surfaced to the public. It is disturbing that such records still exist this many years after the incident. We have locked out your research team's access, and will be replacing them with EarthGov specialists effective immediately. Please contact me once the replacements arrive. But it does appear like the EarthGov was not happy with, uh, well, their outsourcing on the cleanup. But, you know, since we have a few modules and the contact beam is amazing, one of the good things to upgrade for it is actually the capacity, because more contact beam shots before having to reload is amazing. But yeah, all the blacklight stuff was actually probably part of the cleanups crew's overall effort to make sure the massive amounts of blood and and a uh, marker cipher writing it's all taken care of before well, anybody else had a chance to look at it you advanced pukers. Also hate sketchy ambusher. Oh, but I do love the alt fire on the contact beam. Yeah, a nice little throwback there to Dead Space 1, where sometimes there would actually be swarmers in the different item boxes sometimes. Thankfully, though, they pretty much left those out of Dead Space 2, as they are really annoying. Captain's nest to activate the tethers. All right. The centrifuge looks full to full power from here. Great. Let's hope this works. It'll be tight. You ready? All set. I'll wait for your signal. And it does appear like there's actually one escape pod still present. That was actually one that was actually used in the first game for a crazed member of the crew to make their escape. to do is activate the gravity tether and hopefully get back across. Initiated. 
We crossed the track, but we're coming in hot. I just need you to see what I see, Ellie. I promise it won't hurt. Just put down the screwdriver. Trust me. No! from bad to worse. Man, it's great we're not dead, but... No. Hey look, it's an audio log. That will make everything better. Such as bribing up, blowing up the public sector. Audio log rate number 438642. These could be my last words. The monsters have loose, I couldn't stop them. And now the reactor core is overheating, which will destroy the entire sprawl if I can't fix it. So I hope someone hears this. It means I'm not afraid, at least. I do apologize for overlapping audio there, but. Yeah, I guess I mean. Ellie, Ellie's dead. Sucks. But. Well, at least we got away from the Ishimura, and I guess uh, we'll be continuing on into the mines next time on more Dead Space 2.